Well, welcome back to the channel yet again. Hopefully the mic's not being too frustrated here with the wind. I'm back at GridServe, not to do GridServe, but this post is all gonna be about the negativity around electric vehicles still. What I've seen on forums over the last two years, and I have done something similar to this, but it was a while back. It's all down to the fact of what I've seen and what I've read. And to be honest, a lot of people are still very, very negative about what's happening in the world, not just in the UK and my USA subscribers. Hello, welcome. It'll be different for you across there, slightly different. You can hear some car noise. I've got some diesels starting up here to my right hand side and they are a bit noisy, clacky and whatever. So yeah, this is what it's all about. The negativity from ice drivers who will not change their minds. Okay, while I'm filming this, don't be surprised if someone comes up and asks me about EVs and electric cars. It happens all the time. It is still amazing to me how much ignorance there is out there. Again, I'm sorry for getting a clacky diesel next to me on the right hand side. It is the future, no matter how you look at it. It is still going to be there in 10 years time, no matter how much people think it's a fad and it's not, trust me. I'm going to bring up the late break show. He has had some uh, stick on Facebook and through, I believe it was also on Twitter, regarding how he felt. The problem is some journalists, and he is a professional journalist, some journalists will not let go of the classic car scene or of the, the, uh, the ice cars of today and jump off that wall and go either to ice or over to full EV support. The people who are in the middle of all this are the people getting more stick than me, I believe, because as soon as they say something good about an EV, their majority of supporters from ICE come over and call them black and blue and drag them down and say this, that and the other against them. I've decided not to do that. I've decided to be completely one way, and that is electric. And people seem to think that I've done nothing more than owned EVs for 45 years. Where they get that from, I don't know, but let me show you my history, how it all started and what cars I've actually owned or some of them. And then you'll realize what the decision I've made to come down on this, on this side of electric vehicles. I cannot impose it on people enough to believe that I've had everything they want and they're going through now. I've been there and done it without blowing any trumpets and not being too big headed. But I have, I've done it. I had had enough of them. I'd had enough of spare parts. I'd had enough of filling up at the fuel stations. I'd had enough of the expensive fuel. I, had, I wanted change. And that come about when the electric car came. To me, it was a blessing. It was something that, wow, I thought, I've got to have a piece of this. This is the future action. And, and I think this is where a lot of YouTubers are going wrong, and I'll, I'll reiterate what I said before. People like the Late Break Show, for example, the car pervert, as he calls himself, so he needs to say, look, okay, enough's enough. I'm leaving the classic car scene and all the ice scenario, and I believe that the future is electric, and so support that. If, on the other hand, he doesn't believe that, to, it's, it sends very mixed messages. And he's not the only one here, folks. I'm mentioning him because he was the one who got the stick when I was looking at, at Facebook on his, on his post. To him, it might be new. To me, it's not new. This is why I would come off the wall, went down on the side of EVs. So I hope you get this. I hope you get the idea and concept why I'm just gonna nip through this album and show you my past and my history. And it's not to get extra scores and extra subscribers because I won't be delving into them much again, to be fair. I'll purely be doing electric cars. Well, first of all, yes, it was a beach buggy. Now this, I would have been around, let me give you the age of this now. I would have been around 19 years of age, or 18, something of that nature. This beach buggy here was found in a, a garage not being used, hadn't been used for nearly three years when I bought it. And I put a new battery on it. I lent the money from my nan at the time, paid her back, and it worked. It, it worked. Problem is, it kept packing up because the fuel tank was rotten. So to get that fuel tank out of the front here, the whole body had to come off. So I was forever putting those paper element plastic fuel filters in because it was rusty as hell. And all the petrol was coming up and blocking the carburetor every time I took it out. So I said goodbye to that, let's move on. Here's one for you, my first American car. If anyone knows that that is still around on that registration, I'd be amazed, but uh, whatever. This was a six cylinder, three speed manual Ford Mustang, 1965, 66, I can't remember. I think it was a 65. 
Uh, and there is a Ford Cortina Mark III. What were we doing there? I just do not know. I think we locked the keys in it, if I remember rightly. That was my father. He passed and I ended up with it for about three or four months. It was about two year old when that photo was took. So yeah, that's those. Moving on, Mark I Granada. There you go, good old days. And again, if anyone knows of any of these vehicles still on the road, I'd be amazed. But that was the Ford Granada I had. And he kept that for about a year. That was black. Oh look, here's one for you. Ford Pop, not the sit up and beg, the one after. Okay, that's when I'd just come back from Africa and that was my sister's car, I believe. And the Mustang gave me nothing but problems. I ended up selling it on. So back to this one. This was done for Jubilee, the Queen's Jubilee by someone local. I bought it off him and resprayed it in a green. Well, another one of mine, Ford 3 litre GTXLR Capri. Look at that baby. And it had the traditional black, you know, back tap bonnet, had a Marlboro sticker across the windshield, had the proper Ross style wheels, and that was a 3 litre GTXLR. That thing now would be worth a fortune. So I've been there and done it. Let's move on again. Uh, Dodge Dart Swinger. Yeah, that was a great little car. That only had a six pot in it, slant six as they used to call them. But it was great when those windows were down, super duper. Imagine some of these now with electric conversion, how brilliant they would be. But anyway, there you go. When I had this, there was only one other I knew to in Derby, which was a green one. Um, I doubt very much if this is still out there. Uh, PLT15R, if anyone knows if it is, let me know. Mustang, Ford, Mustang 2, gear. This was only a 2.8 V6, nothing but trouble with it, but I persevered, ran it for a while, tried to fix it up, sold it on nine months later, made money. Again, there's pictures of it on the back. This is where I used to live in a little terraced house. And uh, there's a side picture of it. And then I went onto this Camaro. Now this Camaro here, had it all sprayed up, did all, most of the work myself, got it resprayed. Again, kept it for about nine months, made a good bunch of money on it. Then I went to Belgium, I bought this back from Belgium, 2.3 gear Mustang. That thing was like new when I got it. 17,000 mile on the clock, no, 15,000 mile on the clock when I bought it back from Belgium. And it needed the engine, the top end of the engine doing. Got that done, didn't do it myself, got it done. And that was a lovely little thing to own because it was like new, you know? So yeah, another Mustang, move on. Okay, Chevy Monza Spider. All right, very, very rare car now. Don't see any of these at all. That's my boy when he was younger. So yeah, there it is. I had spider decals down the side and on the bonnet, there was a big spider motive and whatever. I don't know if you can see it on that one. Yeah, you can just see the black legs of the spider there. Look, All original, all proper. Only a 2.3, I think it was. A four cylinder, slow as hell, but it looked the part. So again, that with an electric conversion would be amazing now. Moving on, Buick, Buick Regal, 3.8 V6. Love that, super, super car. This now is very, very Vogue. Um, in, in LA now, this would fetch super money. It really would. Um, had that for about nine months to a year. Even the wife drove that around Loughborough for a while. So let's move on again. Okay, 1967 original GTA V8 289 Mustang. Bought it from a guy in Ireland. Um, it was a... Well, it had been totally misused. Even the heater system on it was copper pipes, would you believe, took straight from the radiator around the seats. And honestly, it was so messy as it was real. And then when I'd finished doing it up, that's how it ended up. Sold it to a young lad who'd never ever owned a V8 car before, be it a classic or not. I spent a fortune on that thing, but I made some serious money on it still. Uh, sold it for 6,500, which was a lot of money back in the day then, uh, around 30 years ago. And he smashed that in London and left it in the West End of London. I got a call off the uh, local cops down there saying, do you still own this car? I said, no, I do not. I've just sold it for about a week ago. And it turned out he'd uh, done some damage to it. And there you go. That's the last I heard of it. Again, detailed lot, braided everything and chrome this and chrome that been there and done it gentlemen so you know especially to some of the american people who think that i know nothing about this side of cars i did it when you were still in your nappies kids you know what i'm saying so don't knock mr kevin let's move on 
Little brown car, they used to rot like devilment. This was a, a pretty much of a rock box around the bottom edges. Had it all done up. Again, only a, a, a four cylinder. Or was this a V6 one? I can't remember, I think it was four cylinder. Didn't keep it too long. The wife drove it around a bit and then I sold it on. I doubled my money on that one actually and made some good profit. So let's move on again. Okay, uh, C-Class Dodge this time. As you can see, look, all original. Look at that baby there. Put your gas bottles in there. Um, yeah, all original. That is not on the road anymore. I pretty much guarantee that. Uh, bought it for around £2,000. Uh, sold it. I get double my money on that when I'd uh, renovated it and messed about with it a bit. So, yeah, another C-Class owned by me and my family. Let's move on. Okay, this one here. 5 litre GT, 1988. One of the first in the UK. When I bought this back, this was about nearly four years old three and a half to four years old nothing could touch this in in loughborough bring on your cosworths mates because this thing it ate them there's jack an old friend of mine he went to the states with me to buy this from that place there duval ford in i believe it was jacksonville yep paid some decent money for it got it over here sold it to a guy who did raves would you believe after about a year or 18 months of owning it it was a lovely thing that was and it was a manual and it was a manual used to rock it used to make a beautiful noise although i'm not into noise from cars anymore and then like i said i sold it to him and about six months later i ended up with this bumper back here the bonnet was back to me he'd side wiped it boom a car went straight into the side of it there completely ruined it there you go and again i made some serious money on that car Chevy Astrovan, people carrier, 4.3 V6, had all the black tints and everything, used to get the family in that. Did some time with that as well. That was, a, that was a decent little thing. Moving on, another little small four door, I believe that was a Buick, yes it was. Again, my wife drove that around, bit of a grocery get for us. And then on the drive, you can still see another Astro, I think that's that one i just shown you actually. And that was one of my trucks I did some haulage with. Again, another one I imported from Florida. This was a uh, 1979 full-size, and I mean full-size Ford Bronco, the last of the full-size. I, I believe in 80, they, they downsized them by about an inch. Um, it had a four-inch body lift, um, massive KC headlights across the top. And when I shipped that back from Florida, made a boo-boo because -boo I left the lights on, and it's all done on size. Cost me about 400 pound more than it should have done. But again, it was a rough old ride that was, bumped you all over the place, but again, that thing now with electric conversion would be brilliant. So yep, that was me Bronco, four wheel drive. Moving across straight the way, another Buick Regal. Bought this from a guy in Florida yet again, private purchase, uh, loved it. It was mint when I got it. Got it back from Florida, had it for about a year, sold it to a guy called Chris Jackson. So if anyone knows Chris Jackson of old, he used to run the Americana here in England for many, many years. A uh, good guy, Chris was. He bought it from me, paid me £4,200 for it. I made about a grand profit. Again, one of my kids when it was a lot younger. This was a Plymouth Voyager, one of the first. Um, again, just an A to B car for the family to get around in. And I think at the back there, I think you'll see that that is a Mustang. Uh, I think it's about a 79. Anyway, we'll move on. Here you go, look, that's, this is the back to that Buick Regal I said I bought in Florida. It was mint, absolutely like new. Uh, again, super low mileage thing, but that was a lovely drive. That was a 3.8 V6. Another one, another Jamboree. This is another C-Class I had. Um, again, problems with this one was again around the toilet area. I had to take it all out, strip it all out, put some fresh wood in and everything, and then sold it. Used to keep it on the front of my house where the bus stop was and annoy the neighbors. Sold it, made about two and a half grand on that one. Dodge Stratus, I believe that was the only one in the UK when I bought that back. Again, it was a four cylinder car. Little story about this one was that I was in business at this time with American Auto Parts. That mirror got smashed up outside my house. I put an insurance claim in and I was the one who supplied the parts for the insurance company, but I made some good money on it. Here was one of my Mustangs, um, GTS light covers on the front look. Nice car, nice car. Only a 38 V6, but the number plate was mine as well, G6 USA, so I ended up selling that later on. But I kept that quite nice and it shone up lovely. I didn't buy this one in the US, I actually bought this uh, in England somewhere, if I remember rightly. And again, sold it off. I think I made about a grand on that when I sold it. I was making some excellent money on these cars. But don't forget, all these were in, you know, insured and registered in my name. These weren't just trade cars. These were properly in my name. Moving on slightly to some travel trailers or caravans I bought. That was one of them. Again, I think I bought that for about three grand, sold it for about four and a half. 
This one I bought in the backyard. That's the actual picture in Florida. Bought that in Florida from a, an elderly couple, lovely elderly couple. They'd had it for about 10 years. It was 10 years old, I believe, when we bought it. The Road Ranger had a permanent bed, roof air conditioning, which you can just see here. Um, yeah, we loved that and we kept that for a while actually and towed that with a van, a big G20 Chevy van. Limousine, uh, didn't buy this in the US. I bought it again uh, in England, set up an, uh, a limousine company for a short time, did a few jobs in it, did a few weddings, then decided to sell it, sold it to someone in Leicester, I believe, remember rightly, and again, made about 1,500 pound on that one. And just to recap, that's another picture of the Jamboree outside my house. That is the setup I had. Look, there's the G20 van. This here was an ultralight twin axle caravan. Had everything, air conditioning, everything, pop-up aerial, you name it. Bunks in the back, double bed here, full-size kitchen. I ended up selling that to Thames Studios at the time. And I don't know if anyone's out there old enough to remember London's Burning, the TV series. Or well, the stars who are in London Burning use that to live in while they're on set. And there's another picture of the G20 van panel van I use from a business and there's another picture of the limousine. Now, there are some YouTubers out there who would not support electric cars because they know that their subscriber base is based on fossil fuel cars stroke ice owners. And because of that, if they mention EVs without taking the mickey or without being very anti and denying about them, they lose subscribers. Very, very easy for me to jump on board and go, okay, I'm gonna be 50-50 on this and I'm gonna support ice as much as I support EVs. And I 100% know that my subscriber base would go up double if not treble because then I would have more an audience. I support the very small audience, the minority at the moment of car ownership and that is electric. So because of that, my subscriber base is far less than someone who's supporting ice and fossil fuel cars and classic cars because let's face it, I would guess that 75% still of the population, maybe even 80, are still not into the electric car scene do not know anything about electric cars or very uneducated. I've dropped on the side of EVs on that side of the wall and that's the side I'm gonna stay on. So accept it or not, my subscriber base will stay the same or will grow as more people transition over to electric cars. Well, here we are back in this Seat Me. Uh, if you've not seen this post yet, by the way, have a quick gleg if you're into Seats and Me's, but not the petrol version. This is the full electric version out of Dino Land. Anyway, go and see that post if you've not seen it yet. If it interests you, great little car this. All right, um, moving on fast to the end of this video. People now have to make a decision. Two, three, four, five years ago, the EV world was still wide open and there wasn't enough EVs to choose. There wasn't enough chargers. The infrastructure was pretty poor. Um, people definitely did not want change. Now it's the end of 2023 nearly. And to think it's 2024 next year, it's, it's gone so fast for me. It's, you know, nearly, it will be six years since I first owned an EV uh, by mid-year next year. And that was a Nissan Leaf, as you well know. So, I, and I've never looked back and I bought that for the wife originally while I ran the Mustang. So if I can do it, everyone can do it. And I hope you took that into consideration when you watched all my old cars and the nostalgia from it all and the, the throwback that it gave everybody, hopefully. Yeah, it brings back memories and everything else, but you know, overall, most of those cars, either I had to spend money on, time on them, effort on them, and was, were they all worth it at the end? No, I don't think they were. I think it was three or four of the later ones that got better and better. Because let's face it, folks here, especially with ICE cars, the more money you can spend on it to buy it, 
the more reliable and the better car it's going to be. Because the thing is with ICE cars, if you've only got a grand worth of money to spend on one, you're going to buy a shed. You're going to buy something that's going to cost you a lot of money in the long term. If you've got 10 grand or 20 grand, you're going to buy better and better. And you're going to buy something that should give you no issues apart from service costs and MOTs and, you know, tire wear. So let's put it in perspective. Uh, some of those cars were great. The major Who that? Um, the majority of them needed time and money. EVs normally don't take any time and they normally don't take any money apart from what you spend to buy it. And EVs are coming very cheap now. This one sitting in now, as you see the video, is 10K, only two years old with 15,000 miles on the clock. Come on. So things are getting better and better in EV land and in Dino land or in Iceland, where they sell frozen food as well. Uh, no, I'm off track. In ice, where people are still buying cars, there's less and less to choose from now. Whereas before, there was more and more ice. Well, there's less and less now. Even Ford in the US have just dropped three car marks, not car marks, car marks, off their list to bring in more money for EVs to stop production of them. And this is the way it's going forward. You know, fossil fuel cars are getting less and less and less to buy and less new models. And, and EVs are just shooting up there, as you well know, and I've mentioned this before. Anyway, back to this video and ending it all. Um, please, please, mate, make a decision. Make a decision. I don't believe you can be middle of the road anymore. I don't believe that you can actually, you know, love ice cars and love EVs and because they're cars. I, th these are two separate ways of motoring. You know, one has 70% less parts. One has zero exhaust emissions and fumes. One has far less to do on the actual overall thing of cost of ownership. One has less servicing. And you know which one I'm on about, the EV. So I think you have to decide which side you want to come down on this because it, it, forums and debates and sometimes even YouTube channels are getting to the point where they're not just debates, they're arguments and they're hatred and, and whatever. And I find that a bit, a bit yuck. And so if you make the decision of coming down either on one side or the other, the hatred falls because I don't care about ice cars anymore. I really don't. Um, and I'll never go back to them. And all those so-called lovely things you've just seen in my albums, yeah, they were lovely at the time, but they're crap now. That's, that's, the, that's, the, you know, that's the issue. What was good then is rubbish now. And these EVs I'm sitting in now, in 10 years' time, you'll look back and go, yeah, but they were pretty rubbish. But at least there were EVs. At least people had transitioned over to electric. So I've made my decision, as I've said in this post, I am now on the side of EVs and a lot of journalists have got to do the same in my opinion. And I made it quite clear there that the fully charged team already have. They don't mention ICE cars. They don't talk about them. They don't, you know, give any time to them. All their time and effort is purely on electric cars, ships, boats, even planes. Great of them, good of them. And Johnny, I think you probably need to do the same. You probably won't ever see this video, but you know, you're a good old journalist, mate, and I've watched you many, many times, but you need to make a decision. And I'm not saying leave classic cars, like I did in the, it was pretty up front there, but don't report on them. You know, run a classic car if you want to at weekends, by all means, but don't make it your fame and fortune. Your fame and fortune has to be with either electric or with ice. I can't see it running both, mate. And that goes for all journalists out there. Pick a side, keep to it, because eventually, I know, you'll be coming on the EV side more and more and more and more, until eventually the ICE journalist will not ever exist anymore. That's how I see it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the pictures. I hope you enjoyed my rant. Um, so what did start off as negativity from ICE spun straight round to the fact that you should all be running an EV. So please subscribe, please tap the icon bell so you get my next video as soon as it's put out there. Please subscribe. Why not? Indeed. The, the channel is growing. I've said enough. I'm off. <laughs>